Hey guys, so we're here, another special guest today. We have Stevie Camilleri from Malta. Stevie, can you uh, introduce yourself for everyone, please? Hi, uh, yes, I'm Stevie, uh, I'm Maltese. I play water polo, I play professionally with Roman Water in Italy. I'm 30, going to be 33 soon. I'm getting old now. Uh, that's it, basically. I've been playing water polo more or less for as long as I can remember, and hopefully, I'll get to do it sometime soon. Of course. And how are you, how are you managing during the lockdown? What are you doing with your day? Uh, I'm mostly inside. I have two young children, so very careful. Uh, I try to do home workouts, keep, keep myself active, keep my children active as well, <laughs> tie them out. Um, I've recently purchased a wetsuit, so I'm going for a swim in the sea. Just something to keep my head going rather than my fear. My, my, it's more a question of keeping mentally fit rather than uh, physically. Do you guys have anything to do from your coach back in Italy? Uh, yes, we get brief workout sessions, but it's mostly land sessions, nothing to do with the sea. Okay. Uh, and how did you start playing water polo when you were younger? I was. I mean, my first sport in the water was swimming. I first started with swimming. Uh, I did that for a while. And then I remember friends, friends of mine had already moved on to water polo because it was the same club. It was, it was a boat swimming and water polo club. Yeah. Uh, so naturally, I, I tried it out. I enjoyed it. Being a team sport, at that age, it was a lot more attractive than swimming alone. So roughly at around 11 years of age, I gave up swimming and I started uh, water polo and took it on as my main sport. Okay. And did you have anyone that you, you looked up to as a player in Malta at the time? At the time, no. I mean, at the time it was very, I mean, it was just to have fun. It was something uh -huh. I liked, enjoyed doing. And obviously, as I, uh, as I did it more often, uh, I got more drawn to the sport. They, my interest grew. And yes, there were players at the time, I can't remember who exactly, but yes, obviously I looked up to the first team of the club, mm -hmm. the senior team. And uh, at that age, I remember aspiring to one day be part of that same team. Yeah. And then, so obviously you play for Neptunes back home? No, I do. So how, how did you go from playing for Neptunes to now playing for Roma, European Championships, etc.? Uh, in 2000. When I first got into the sport, I remember it was the, the league was limited to just Maltese. So there weren't foreigners. Then I remember at around, I, was, I don't remember if I was 18 or 19, they introduced uh, a foreigner per team. So each team could get a foreigner. Uh, I left a good impression on our foreigner, who was Vladimir Vujazinovic, who's uh, renowned to be one of the best ever players of the sport. Uh, he sort of he advised me that to take it to the next level, I would need to train harder because at that time I remember the sport here yeah, more than it was limited to six months out of the year, where you do two three months of preparation, and the league would be another three months. Uh, obviously, to play at higher levels, that wasn't enough. So he advised me and he helped me, and I. I remember doing a winter in uh, Belgrade with Partizan. Right. And uh, I trained and the year after I joined an Italian club. And from then I haven't, it's been 12 years now. Oh, very good. So would you say probably uh, Vladimir coming over was probably the most important part of your career? Uh, yes, it was the, the first step. So I mean, so without that first step, I'm quite certain that uh, everything else wouldn't have followed. And then I'm sure you've had a lot of coaches in your time. Is there one that kind of is sticks out for you as one of the best and helped you the most? Uh, yeah, I've had a number of coaches, a number of foreign coaches of very high level. Um, no one in particular. I mean, I try. I've always had good relationship with most of my coaches, and I've always, you know, noticed that certain coaches are stronger in certain aspects and weaker in others, and sort of they compensate for each other. But I always try. 
try to pick the best aspects out of each coaches and try to emulate them. Because obviously, after my playing career, I hope to even start coaching myself. But I've had the possibility to train up with high-level coaches such as Sergei Markoc, who was captain of the Russian team, who played the uh, Olympics and is one one of the attributes I I appreciate most of his was uh, how organized he was. I mean, and that's something that I'm uh, I, I think is very positive, especially when working with younger players. Having you know, set you set a timetable. You set you make it clear that you have certain objectives objectives you want to reach, and uh, you go to each stage to reach those objectives. I mean, that's that is something that you can then even take into other walks of life. I mean, be it work, be it whatever your own business. So that's something I really appreciated, and I mean, something I remember. Yes. Very nice. And then obviously you've played against a lot of players as well. Is there a few that stand yeah. out as the toughest against you've played? Uh, again, I've had, I've been lucky enough to play against the, the top, what you'd say, the top, uh, top athletes in this sport. Names that stand out, I mean, Vlado Vyazinov for obvious reasons, I mean, some of which are personal as well. Uh, but yes, the Janovic brothers were... They played my position, the Montenegrins, Lan and uh, Nikola, Ivovic. I mean, there have been so many that mm -hmm. it would take up all the interview mentioning. <laughs> uh, you guys have been lucky in Malta that you guys have uh, big names coming over every summer. Isn't that yes. right? Yes, yes. I mean, that's an attraction. An attraction to, uh, that draws new people into the sport, new blood. Uh, raises the level of the sport here. Yeah? With regards to not necessarily just the, the the water polo playing aspect, but also with regards to marketing the sports and helping it grow in that regard, yes, we've been very fortunate. Uh, of one of the the downfalls of this pandemic is that unfortunately this summer we won't be having mm -hmm. foreigners over. So but anyway, yeah, we're just thinking of getting back in the pool and everything else will be. Of course. Seen too afterwards. Of course. And so how do you find then coming from playing in Italy in the, in the Serie A to playing in Malta then in the summer? Is there a big, big difference in standard? Uh, the league is very different. I mean, uh, something that's... I mean, the main aspect of playing in Italy is the tactical aspect, but there's a lot more preparation put into that. Uh, obviously, as well, training... You train longer hours, so even physically you benefit. Um, but again, uh, the, the introduction of foreigners in the local league bridged that gap. Yeah. So now it had we were limited to two foreigners per team. So I mean, which which would mean that you know, being uh, seven players in the water at a go, two of them are of very high standard. Obviously, raises the standard of everyone else. So yes, there is a difference, but. Uh, it is not. They're not too, too extremes. It's a grey area, but I mean, hopefully, with a lot of hard work and preparation, one day we can bridge the gap further. And what would you say is your favourite tournament you've ever played in? Uh, my favourite tournament would be the European Championships in Belgrade in 2016. Uh, it was our first time as a national team participating in uh, such a high level tournament. Uh, I also finished the tournament top scorer, for which was for me something which I would have never imagined. And also being in Belgrade sort of brought back all the memories having, of having started there and having trained there. So it was a person. I enjoyed it on a person, very personal level. Mm -hmm. You've had how many European championships now? Uh, I've participated in the last three. Okay, good. Which would be Belgrade, Barcelona, and uh, the last one in Budapest. Yeah, so Maltese is going from strength to strength then, as a, as a nation. Uh, yes, I mean, we've reached this level, but I think we can still do a lot more. There's a lot more potential. A lot is being done, especially at youth levels. Uh, they've not only introduced foreign players, but even foreign coaches, some of which are here on a full-time basis. So all 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 year uh, so 
whereas I, when I was young, I was limited to six months out of the year. Now it's been widened to 10, 10 months, 10 and a half months out of the year, which obviously helps. Of course. Um, have you played against Ireland in your career at all? Uh, I do. I do remember a couple of games. I remember playing against uh, one of them in particular. I remember uh, 2007, I think, in Manchester in the European Bs. Okay. I don't remember the score and I don't remember much, but I remember, yes. Yeah, good. I, 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 I might have played them on another occasion, but I can't recall uh-huh. when exactly. And have you ever been to Ireland yourself? No, no, I've never. I've never. Uh, I have. Uh, British relatives. Okay. So I mean, uh, obviously, I'm attracted to, to. I hopefully that uh, once I stop, I'll have a bit more time and I can visit, uh, and have chance to travel around. But uh, Ireland is one of my, my go-to places. Mm-hmm. And what advice would you give to young children? Um, what advice? In this situation or, or in general? Uh, we can go both. Uh, in, in this particular situation, I would advise children uh, to stay active as much as possible. I mean, uh, I started this week. I help out with the youth, with the youth sector here, my club here in Malta. And I've started online sessions, which is, I mean, very light sessions. Uh, it's just, I mean... Uh, as I said, it's important to keep your your to keep mentally active, yeah. and it's I mean hopefully I mean doing some sort of activity physical activity also distracts you from uh, the, the rest of the situation, yeah. which I mean I'm sure is not easy to deal with at a younger age. I mean where you have we have a very little idea of what's going on exactly, yeah. let alone I mean the younger generations that are you know used to being told exactly what to do. I mean, be it school, be in attending sessions, and now they're being left, you know, to themselves, more or less. Uh, so, yes, I would advise them to keep active and uh, any possibility they have of doing so, be it a walk in uh, wherever, around your block, around in a valley, whatever. Take advantage of the situation. And, and that is it. And in general, I would, I mean... This situation also pro- probably makes them, allows them to, to actually understand how important sport is mm. and uh, how we normally take it for granted and how we grumble. And now being stuck in this situation, we realize how, how it's something that we, we actually need. It's a necessity. It's not something that we do just for the sake of doing. Yeah. And of course, everyone's sitting at home um, doing nothing. So is there any games uh, you'd so- recommend children to watch? Uh, my, myself uh, as well. I, I go back to YouTube and I look up uh, past Olympic Games, past European Championship Games, games of high level. I mean, you never stop learning, even at my age. So uh, that's another thing they could do as well. I mean, nowadays, it's, I mean, it's very easy. You just connect to internet, connect to whatever, your mobile, with your mobile iPad, whatever. Go on to YouTube, find the past games and I mean, at least, okay, you're sitting on the sofa watching TV, but at least you're learning and it's, it's something a bit more positive. Yeah. Is there a favourite game you have to watch back on? Uh, no. Money party. I, I, maybe, obviously, past my games of the past where, I, you know, you tend to, uh, again, take for granted and... and, and at the moment, you, you know, when life is going by normally, you don't give much importance to, but then when you come to a standstill, you sort of look, tend to look back. And, and so I go over those games and, you know, enjoy the memories. Perfect. Stevie, thank you very much for your time today. We really appreciate thank you. it. And we hope everybody well, stays safe with you. I ho- hopefully everyone stays safe in general. And I mean, hopefully we're soon all out of this situation. Of course. Thank you very much. No, welcome.